Secondary antioxidants usually function as peroxide decomposers, so they're a really important part of the antioxidant package, but often antioxidation is not their primary purpose. So it'll be something like a ZDDP, which is around for anti-wear purposes, but can also provide some oxidation inhibition. How does it exactly do that? Let's get into it. So let's talk about the secondary antioxidants. And if you remember, we have something called the auto oxidation cycle, which describes how um, different uh, base oils and you know, effectively hydrocarbons uh, oxidize while they're in service. Now, we can try and inhibit oxidation by attacking different parts of the problem. So for example, we could try to prevent the initial formation of free radicals. Now, free radicals are usually formed by excessive heat or temperature, electrostatic discharge, maybe it's nuclear radiation, uh, something like that. And so by preventing that, uh, we can prevent the formation of a free radical in the first place. One of the other ways that we can do it is to prevent contact with oxygen. So we can do things like reducing the amount of entrained air in our system, right? That'll reduce our exposure to oxygen. Um, we can do nitrogen blanketing, as an example. Um, so there are all these kinds of things that we can do to reduce the initial stages of the auto oxidation cycle. Then beyond that, we have primary antioxidants whose main function is to intercept most of these other radicals. And when it comes to the peroxides, that's what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to talk about peroxide decomposers. Now, how do we kind of achieve that? Well, what we need is some kind of other substance which can intercept these peroxides and establish uh, another branch of this chain, if you like. So one thing that we can do, for example, is look at some of the dialkyl sulfides, right? Um, so the way that they function is primarily to take on one of the oxygens and form a bond with it. And this is a hydro uh, peroxide being converted to a dialkyl sul uh, sulfoxide, right? Um, now, the problem with that is that it, it is generally not all that stable and it generates a sulfenic acid um, from the sulfoxide if there is a bit of heat. So um, generally we get a further decomposition of that molecule. Now if we have another peroxide come into the picture, we can also decompose that as well. So we can usually decompose uh, two of those peroxides. So that's one of the ways in which some of these sulfur-based uh, secondary antioxidants can work. But along with sulfur-based molecules, we also have um, organo uh, phosphorus molecules, as well as sulfur phosphorus compounds, right? And of course, um, you'd be familiar with this molecule, which is ZDDP, which contains phosphorus and it also contains sulfur. Now, that's one of the things that makes it such an effective anti-wear agent, right? Um, we know from the anti-wear video that phosphorus and sulfur play uh, key components in laying down that anti-wear film and interacting with the metal surface. What it generally does here is it inhibits the peroxides, but does so in a reasonably inefficient way. So generally what we need is four of these molecules for every one peroxide that we're trying to decompose. Those will generally break apart, so um, and then we'll kind of surround the oxygen. And what you can see is it is pretty inefficient, right? So we have um, four zinc uh, diacyl diphosphate molecules to just inhibit one uh, uh, peroxide. And so that, that's why we could, would call it sort of like a, a secondary antioxidant because its primary function is, of course, um, to lay down an anti-wear film, but it has synergistic effects with the other um, antioxidant additives. All right, that's been a really quick one today, but hopefully that gives you a little bit of an explanation as to why ZDDP and um, maybe other uh, EP-style additives can also have an effect on the oxidation properties of an oil.